What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hold Husband Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Duran. I got my co-host, Jay Bob, on the line with me tonight. What's going on, bro? Not much, man. Definitely, definitely missing SD right now. And if he was on, he'd probably be clowning me about fantasy over the week. But want to quickly remind you, you can catch us on TikTok as well. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Hold Husband Podcast. And as for those interested in promos and shout outs, you can shoot us a DM at Hold Husband Podcast as well as shoot us an email hold on the podcast at gmail.com all right t uh i want to remind everybody uh y'all can catch the audio playback of the podcast every monday afternoon at 4 p.m central standard time on the core 94.com uh i also would like to give a shout out to my man brother soul productions for always keeping us like for our background music uh and i also want to remind everybody to continue supporting the podcast through our cash app and our paypal uh tonight's episode is titled is she worth it uh we're gonna be talking about uh how men make dating decisions uh and some of the challenges that single men face on the dating market um but y'all know how we do around here man we like to discuss stuff that we've seen trending or stuff that we've seen on our timeline uh and so this first video that we're going to talk about is a, a video of a, a music singer Jaden, jadena jadena i'm not sure how you pronounce his name it is. Um, <laughs> But uh, he's kind of um, criticizing himself for his fuckboy days. Let's take a listen. I robbed some women of their baby making years, dragging them along. They built me up. Look at me now and look at them. If you are creative, I folded you into my artwork. If you were in my artwork, I gave you a job. I gave you a job. I mastered your life. I gave you a house, food, everything you need. I protected and provided for you. I did what men are supposed to do. You know, I remember different quotes I said, like just like really manipulative things to say, like no one's gonna love you the way I do. My God, I'm ashamed of it. And I, that's what makes me angry when I see my brothers do that. We can't do that to, to the women that have done so much for us to even exist. And I saw myself for the first time. All the things I'm saying now, woo, horror. Bit by bit, I stripped myself of my former self. And I swore that the next relationship that I would get in, I would work as hard at love as I worked in my career. All right, now, um, you got to give him credit for the maturity and the growth. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I would argue, you know, I understand where he's where he's coming from that he he didn't end up with those women, um, but those women got to live the lifestyle of dating a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? All the perks yeah. that come along with it. Um, he talked about the house, you know, the providing the things that he's done for them. Uh, so I, I, I think he's uh, being a little overcritical of himself because. Um, just because a relationship doesn't work out doesn't mean that you did something wrong. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's yeah. statistically, you're not, most of the people that you date or link up with, you're not going to be with forever. So um, when you do lie and deceive women or, you know what I'm saying, like, um, one thing that he did say, the uh, no one's ever going to love you like this. In a lot of ways, that may be true. <laughs> Some women right. may never seriously date another celebrity after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so um, I don't think necessarily everything that he was saying was right. fuck boy or a lie, um, but I appreciate yeah. him taking accountability right. for the well, stuff. Absolutely. I think it's one thing he says, you know, hey, you might not make it another lifestyle that I'm able to provide, but he said, you know, no one's going to love you like I do, which is, I think, you know, it's relative. Everybody has a different definition, different meaning for love. But I think... This, the situation that he described here, I think this is kind of common amongst women. Young, I would say younger women in their 20s for the most part. I mean, SDUT, he would he talks about this on his platform all the time, how women, you know, they spend their prime years with, you know, the whole phase. Because this is what he pretty much described as the prototypical whole phase dude in their 20s, yeah. maybe even 30s. Male celebrity, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, listen, he's the of the, of the of the other profession. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, it, but, you know, she, hey, no one's going to love you like I do. And she's willfully going for that. I mean, it's not on, it's not on him. Because at the end of the day, look, he didn't force her to be with him. He didn't, he didn't have a gun. To, when she's with him, she's making a conscious choice to be with him and deal with whatever that comes with. 
Yeah, you know, now if he he, he didn't, I, I didn't, you know, we just saw a clip. Uh, I don't know if he was abusing them or doing something right. else, but uh, just the, the simple fact of if you are a single man and you live in a bachelor lifestyle, whatnot, um, even if you are involved with women for a significant period of time or on a significant level, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you did them wrong because in a lot of ways you could have been looking out for her for years. Um, and so mm -hmm. uh, take accountability so, for the things you do that are wrong or out of line. Right. Everything ain't your fault. Exactly. I think what happens is like women always look at it from a negative life. Like, okay, you spend X amount of years, let's just say five years and it didn't work out. The end, you know, it wasn't marriage, which is for a lot of women is the end game. Oh, he wasted my time. This, that, and the third, I wasted my time with them. When I, like you said, no one really wasted their time. It just didn't work out for whatever reasons. And it could be a whole right. laundry list of things. You know, yeah, you know, because time and matters. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. The, the age, the maturity level that a person's at when you're dealing with them. Um, sometimes there are unexpected or unforeseen situations that can derail a relationship. Uh, there are misunderstandings that can come up that can do the same thing. So, there are um the reality is in order to keep a relationship in a comfortable level for an extended period of time takes work work by both parties um and so most people are, are not compatible enough or don't have the skill set to actually do that um so even if you are able like i, I while i was preparing for the show uh, i saw a post that uh outlined joe button's relationships uh, where so Terry the the what years he was with him, uh, and, yeah. and the thing that came to mind is like every woman that he dated, it was like two or two years plus that he was with them. So it wasn't just like he's in his whole phase just running around sleeping with random women. He's actually right. seriously dating these women. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, but he's a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Like so his dating experience is, is always going to be very drastically different than the average right from the average. just from the name recognition and the, the celebrity status alone well well right and he's got access to a lot of the women a lot of these celebrity women that you know the average guy isn't going to have access to even if let's just say he shoots her a dm on instagram at nine times out of ten that's not even going to be it's going to be seen <laughs> exactly if it come from a blue check it will yeah so, but, I mean, but, nowadays, every, but everybody's got a blue check now. So unless it's, you know, actual, you know, celebrity that somebody actually knows, he's probably not saying it's not getting answered. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, when, when you talking, when we talking about how um, men, women are always portrayed to be the victim, right? Right. Um, and, and that's, it's so frustrating because that they can do it on any situation, no matter what the cause of the breakup was. They could be the reason that you stopped. <laughs> you exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, they could be the ones that was disrespectful or got out of line or whatnot, but they'll always be able to portray it's, themselves as a victim like they were taking right. advantage it, of, no matter how much they got the benefit. It, exactly. No matter, it's, you know, it's like, no matter how, what the situation is that they're no longer together, hey, the guy's a bad guy, and the woman's picked regardless let's just say you know she cheated on with 10 other dudes and he said hey listen this this ain't for me go ahead and do what you do he's still a bad guy and she's still a victim out, out of this situation yeah and, and, and it's the same way for a lot of guys in a marriage because it's not it, it if you have kids with a woman um mm -hmm. it, it feel it's not just like you just leaving her in a lot of ways your relationship with your children is going to be altered forever your access to your children the, you know, the amount of time the, oh, the things that you 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 get to experience with your kids uh and so all of those are the kind of things that men are, are logically thinking about because leaving a, a marriage you know in addition to the finances and the physical difference and sleeping in it you know having to get an apartment you was living in a big ass house now you gotta you know what i'm saying like you gotta relax mm -hmm. and, and rebuild you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like kind of from the ground up you're not gonna get in most cases the man is not gonna get all the assistance that a woman would in a situation like that um and he, he's not gonna get the sympathy from the public either nope at least not not the state they, the state is on her side in this situation <laughs> unfortunately yeah it, it is it's, it is unfortunate um that's why you have to be careful and and um 
do your best to try to vet the woman that you're, you you uh, right. intend to marry. I think, but I think even that's, that's not guaranteed because absolutely. people change. You know, no what I'm like, I think you know the vetting part. I think that that's gonna really tie really tie into the next video that we're gonna discuss here. Yeah, you know, um, it's it's where most people go wrong. To be honest, the. Uh, they they're in such a rush to, to um be in a relationship oh. or to be able to claim somebody um that right quick they, um, they, they skip all the important stuff go ahead quick quick, quick question do you do you still got the compatibility god do you, do you still have yeah. do you still have, are you still up that and yeah for those for those out there man i strongly suggest that and really see if you are compatible with the person as opposed to just rushing into something and or going into something blindly and hope for the best there yeah, I appreciate you bringing it up, man. I, I, I've mentioned this for so many years. I'll be just yeah. assuming that people know about it already. But yeah, uh, I do have a dating guide available on terryderon.com. It's only a $1.50, uh, but it's something that you download to your phone. Um, and basically, it has a couple of, it has an evaluation chart. It has a dating calendar uh, so that you can actually print out the sheets and then evaluate the person you dating on their character responsibility you know the things that really matter and you can chart your dating experience with them so you can turn your experiences with them into data uh and make some more logical dating decisions uh so that that's definitely something my, you know my gift to women you know so i'm trying to help them with the dating process uh let's let's switch up now this this next video is actually talking about the dating process uh where a woman's ex explaining um how she she convinces men to take her to the restaurants that she wants to go to uh by using what she calls the sandwich method let's take a listen i saw this girl he sh um she had taught me but i was already doing it the sandwich method where you just suggest like the, the restaurant off the bat you don't even let a man pick you just say like oh I really like this what do you think and he'll be like yeah that's great that, like, that mean that mean it becomes your date wait I what is that about yeah. the sandwich what sandwich method where you just like suggest you say something nice you say what you want and then you say something nice again so like let's say you sent me the cheesecake factory i'd be like oh that's great i can't wait to i can't wait to meet you but i was really thinking we could go here they have a special for salmon and again i can't wait to see you on tuesday you'll be like oh okay like she can't wait to see me and she likes salmon so we're gonna go here like you just suggest it That's and you say running. two nice things you fly with that yeah i like that that yeah. will work word to me doing that word to me that'll work word to me that'll work uh i think that would work on most guys um but it, i think it's definitely a manipulation tactic it's not going to be very successful with the men that that are successful with women um because how that usually going to go is you suggest hey let, i think man let's go to this place she's gonna say oh you're handsome Let's go to this more expensive <laughs> place. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's yeah. go to this more yeah. lavish place. Um, that's usually the the rebuttal that you're going to get from women. Uh, and so, if, if you most guys, well, I ain't going to say most guys, but the ones <laughs> that have a success are not about to get finessed by some little simple word game like this. <laughs> I mean, this is worth it. I mean, you know what? This is not a common percent because this is more like a sales method. They, <laughs> they actually use this stuff. Yeah, I, I, I actually trained to be a used car salesman, so they use these kind of methods in in sales because it's basically getting the customer to feel like the choice was theirs to buy that car. So that's kind of the method that she's implementing here in this situation. Hey, yeah, cheesecake is good, but let, like you said, let's go to this more lavish restaurant and be nice and okay. come up, you know, very very sweet, sweet and dem and demure in that situation. And like you said, she's being. And I I look at it like this. If she's doing that, I feel like she doesn't like you on that level, or she doesn't have any true genuine exactly. interest. Exactly. Because most of the time, if a woman has interest, in, I see the place doesn't even really matter. You know, you can say, Facts. "Hey, let's go to the hot dog stand and go to the park." If she likes you, she'll she'll be with it. And and, and honestly, you have your most intimate settings with a woman where y'all just randomly hanging out, and you know what exactly. I'm saying, like going on walking with somewhere. You know what I'm saying, like sitting on some stairs, uh, just sitting. You know, I've had some of my my best conversations with women. Uh, one I can think of was standing outside of a car. You know what I'm saying? Like we were sitting out. It was after a party. We were outside. I walked outside and saw her outside. Followed her outside, and we end up talking for like two hours outside of her car. But one of the best I conversations think, ever. Because I think in that situation, what one appreciates more is 
the time and the attention and you know you've been you know the company that she has you know enjoying your company as opposed to hey let's go to this restaurant and you know spend a 300 dollar dinner tab here you know yeah i feel like something like that you should do when you've already established something with her you're in a relationship with her that's something you then fine that's but just to take her out to impress her for what and i say like this listen if she, if you ask her to go to papados and she suggests something else fellas she ain't the one for you <laughs> yeah, right now. You you gotta be able to see through stuff like this though. But when when you you said it exactly, I was gonna say this this is a vibe that a woman does not is not really interested in you. Because like you said, when a woman really likes you or is really rocking with you, it don't matter. Y'all gonna eat in all kind of places. Y'all gonna eat at Waffle House, y'all gonna eat here, y'all gonna <laughs> eat some one day he's gone, y'all gonna eat at Sonic. Like it, the, the things that you eat are, are really insignificant. Uh, and so, like I said, this will work on lots of guys because when they like a woman, they're trying to impress her and they're trying to do all these types of things to make her make her happy and, and I ain't afraid to tell her no. Um, but you, you, one of the hardest things for guys to learn is how to tell a woman no. Like, yeah. nah, I ain't going, you know, think, like just because a woman well, suggests think, something don't mean you exactly. gotta accept it. I think it's hard. It, it becomes hard for a man to tell a woman no. It's because he, there's sex involved, or he feels like there's sex involved. All <laughs> the sex is in the equation. It's harder for him to say no because he, he's doing it in the hopes of, hey, I'm gonna take her home after that. We go. We gonna go together, and you know, I'm gonna take her to Pound Town. <clears throat> and well, I think that's where it becomes difficult. Well, I think that's the wrong approach. I never really. I, approach, I agree. I never approach dating like that. Um, I never focused on the night we were going to pound town you know what i'm saying like I, I i mentioned it several times before but as long as our conversations and our engagement is showing that we're on the road to pound town mm -hmm. i'm cool with that you know what i'm saying like like i said the, the first date i'm just trying to get to know you i'm trying to show you my vibe i'm trying to show you how fly i am you know what i'm saying like uh and I'm I'm making it very clear by my body language how it, how attracted I am to you, you know. And there are a lot of different ways that guys show that, you know what I'm saying? Like how when when a guy's body length, his his frame is turned towards you, he, he you know what I'm saying? Like just different cues and things that show you you are his focus of attention. Um, that's where the sexual attention comes from, you know what I'm saying? Like where. She can check you out. You can, she can smell your cologne. You can, you know what I'm saying? You can make yeah. jokes. You can flirt. You can do all those type of things. So where you do it, it ain't really, ain't really, I, don't really matter. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like, so fellas, even, don't, don't go for this. Even this, even, exactly. Even, let's just say, okay, hey, we're going to go to this bar path. Even if she don't drink, if she likes you, she will go with you. She'll find something. Right. Like she'll get a, she'll get a non-alcoholic pina colada or something, man. There's always a reason to you, like you said, yep. we can go sit and have some drinks. Man, this place got some a happy hour or something like that. Yep. Something with long, <laughs> like yo, as a man, you want to be able to get one on one with a woman where you look and fly. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to go exactly. somewhere where you it ain't got to be no somewhere where you gotta dress up or spend a million bucks, but you want to be able to put on your shit that make you look fly and makes a woman <laughs> interested in you so you can. Gather more yeah. of her attention. You know, you know, a video resonated with me when I first heard this. It, you know, we covered this video uh, maybe a year or two back with Kevin Sanders about taking a girl out to a restaurant. And he said, Hey, if you were with those so called dinner scampers, you know, you feel you pretty much failed that dating stage because you should be asking better questions to see if she, you know, if you want to take her out on a date, go or even go that far with her. Well, it ain't even about necessarily the questions, it's how the engagement goes. You know what I'm saying? Like, a woman right. that ain't asking nothing about you, that ain't no, she ain't laughing at nothing. Like, you can tell when a conversation is really, well, I, I say that because I'm one of the guys that can do it. But to me, it seems like it would be very easy when the con woman's conversation is dry. She's doing something else while she's on the phone with you. She's yep. distracted. Those are the type of things, like, man, I, I hit you back. You know what I'm saying? Like, get off the phone. Like, yeah. Or, or let's say, or even if we, you're out with her and, and the conversation isn't like, it's not really a flow to it, you know, you're asking the questions so and she's kind of giving you one or two words here and they're not really following up on any of the questions. Yeah, that's the that's everything you need to know. But yeah, that's, you gather information and you, you can cut the date short. 
all right, well, yeah, let's, you know what I mean? Like, wrap up the tab, wrap up the date, and cut it short. Like, you don't have to, you know, like, the the tonight's, the title of the episode, Is She Worth It? You get to decide that. Is she worth yep. you checking on another date? Is she worth you continuing to call? Is she interesting enough for you to continue to give your time and energy to? If not, redirect that energy somewhere else. You know, you know what? You just hit and you just hit on something. And I think a lot of them fail to realize this that they're pretty much the gatekeepers when it comes to that of how much attention he's going to give to them to sign a FA. We're going we want to take her out. Now, someone might not, you know, if, even if you do want to take her out, I mean, a woman can say no, she can decline, granted. But I think nine times out of ten, part of the game. Men, are, men are pretty much the gatekeeper to a lot of those things. And I think a lot of fellas just don't realize that. But I mean, as a man, you got to accept the, the rejection part of it out, off the top. You know no, what I mean? Like, no so, and so once you get to the point where you're making your own money or whatnot, <clears throat> as long as you you willing to pay for something, man, a lot of people will show up for free stuff, you know what I'm saying? Or something where, <laughs> you know what I'm Like, yep. show your partners. I mean, you, you hit one of your partners up. Hey, I'm over here at Buffalo Wild Wings. Pull up. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though he's going to spend some of his own money, the fact that you already there, you know what I'm saying? Like that, right? That's that's always the the part of being social. And as a man, you should expect that. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, the more men that are there, we can split the cost or whatnot. But you you expect to spend something when you're out as a man. Period. Like we can't go nowhere and get drinks and get food and get in and get without just just all being cute. You know what I'm saying? It nah, like listen, don't nobody, nobody offer a man nothing for just for looking fly. Hey, <laughs> hey, I got all this, I, I got this expensive gold chain. Hey, <laughs> you think you slide me some free? I mean, well, the celebrities no, get free stuff, but just to have yeah. it, you know what I mean? But like, somebody, you, somebody, you know somebody, you know the promoter, right. you know somebody is one of your partners or right. something like that. Um, but but just off the rip, you 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 it, you ain't going out broke. You know what I'm saying? Like no. a dude. Nah, you can't go nowhere broke as a man. Like this day, hey, you gotta. You you shouldn't do that after age twenty. Is you, there's no reason for you to be going <laughs> as a man to be going out broke? I mean, listen, I ain't go. I'm not gonna see you lot to you. I've never done it before. I ain't say that. Yeah, and, I and, 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 in your younger days, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's acceptable then, but but it didn't cost as much to go out then. True. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't we didn't buy bottles and stuff when I was in college. Like that's some of the right. one of the dumbest things ever. But nowadays, college students are buying sections to go to parties and all kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> now college, you were doing you were doing more stuff on the campus. You wasn't actually a lot of times you weren't really going out to unless it was like a lot of times they would go out it was, to be like three before eleven or something like that. Or it was a, a soror, I mean, a, a sorority or a fraternity party. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like in Baton, Baton Rouge, they would have parties at different clubs, uh, and we and we would rent out different venues and have you know okay. or big parties. Um, but man, but that was but that was practical. To, that would be practical, to do, being that it wasn't going to cost you all much money to go to because a lot of times, okay, you it's a capital party. Hey, I'm a cap. I'm getting it. Or you going to a dollar max? Right. Yeah. Forty dollars is is the max. You know what I'm saying? Like you not you not having to come out no major amount of bread. So I can't I I couldn't afford to to live like the college students live these days. Um, no, I don't think nobody <laughs> buying really? buying bottles, buying sections, buying designer clothes. Like that was not my college lifestyle. Um, even though I, I will say that my college lifestyle financially was better than most because I went to the military, but it's, I still couldn't afford to be wearing designer and doing all the stuff that these kids are doing these days. Uh, but it could just be be uh, putting on a show. You know, I guess I, 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 I don't buy enough designer to know I can't eyeball it and tell what's real and what's fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't got enough of it. These kids, like man, these, these kids just pull up in Prada, Gucci, uh, Prada and Gucci and everything. Man, it's wow. I don't know. Maybe some, some of they, I mean, I, from what I've seen, some, some of their families do got money like that. Others maybe not so much. And may or may or may not be doing something that is illegal. <laughs> I, right. I can say yeah. they may or may not. I, I don't. I can't tell you all what they're what exactly they're doing. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that until after I, I like got out of school that a lot of the kids that I used to I remember like being jealous of, like, man, he got all the shoes. You find out later that, that his stepdad's so dope. And you know they're like <laughs> stuff like that, like, oh, I was comparing myself to <laughs> to something that would, you know, get you get you life in prison. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like so um it, it is what it is, man. Uh all right, man, it looks like we uh, are up against the clock. We are about to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be getting into our topic of the night. Uh, is she worth it? And we'll be bringing on our guests. Um, you guys are tuning into the Hoda Hoodie Podcast. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm relationship coach and Arthur Terry Duran, and I am pleased to announce that my book, It's Not That Complicated, is finally available as an audio book. So if you don't like to read or you just don't have time to read a paperback book, this audio book is perfect for you. You can listen to it while you're in your car, while you're at work, etc. In the book, I break down how husband material men think and operate in regards to sex, love, and relationships. And I provide real quality insight on how husband material men approach dating. The audio book is available on audible.com and on iTunes. All you have to do is go to one of the websites and search for my name, Terry Duran. Go download your copy today. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Hold Husband Podcast. Uh, we have our special guest on for tonight. Tonight we have Cassandra Menard in the building. What's going on? Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, we good. We good. Absolutely. Uh, we enjoy having a conversation with you. Uh, you're definitely a friend of the show. Um, before, before we go a little further, can you let the viewers know a little bit about yourself and about your background? Sure, absolutely. My name is Cassandra on Instagram, Asmus Cassandra. I'm a life and relationship coach and a men's advocate. I'm a certified life and relationship coach, I should say. I have a background okay. in social work. And so I'm really, you know, just drawn to men's issues and supporting men around them being able to uh, use language to express their emotions, establish boundaries, um, and being able to have healthy relationships. That's what's up, man. We, we uh, appreciate it. Uh, all the people that are out there advocating for us. Uh, we know, you know, dating and relationships can be, and, and the law can be really unfair to men. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, uh, wh what made you start uh, decide to only focus on, on men? Honestly, I feel like that's more of a spiritual calling than just mm. a, a personal desire. I think it just, I think God just ordered my steps in this way. And the genesis of it all happened um, when I was curious about feminine and masculine energy. And I was curious about how I could show up as the best version of myself as a woman. And along that quest, God just started to show and reveal things to me from a man's perspective in a way that my mom could never explain to me, women could never explain to me. Um, I don't even think that some... Um, Prior to this experience, men could really explain things to me. It's just my ears kind of tune differently and hear problems and challenges differently. And that's when, you know, the social worker in me, that's when I began to recognize the disparity, right? Like there's these high mm -hmm. expectations of men to produce, to provide, to protect, but the resources sure. are so low. And so that's creating tension because the resources are not, are not matching the demand that we have placed mm -hmm. on men. Wow. I mean, it's, it's great that you, you found your calling and advocating with it because I don't think a lot of people advocate for men as they said, especially as they do for women, as you see in current society. So like, what are some of the biggest complaints that you hear from, from your clients? Sure. So, um, one of the posts that I recently put up about reciprocity, mm -hmm. um, that's a big challenge that men are expressing, which is that it's, there are very clear roles for men on how men are supposed to court a woman, take care of a woman, protect them, provide goals or strategies that women are supposed to adhere to so that a man is able to identify whether or not this woman is healthy for him or not. And so without that guide, without this, um, without rituals, you know, tribal rituals that we used to have back in the day, without guidance and support, much taking a long, long trip, right? They really know where they want to go, what kind of woman they want to have, and how they give enough they found her. 
um that's more on the single side of things when it comes to gentlemen in a relationship or married or dating seriously they find that women are not as emotionally grounded as they claim to be and they feel that women move the goal post a lot so their sure. women will start That's off saying that true. they want one thing and then it just morphs into more oh. and more and more demand and it so it's making him feel like oh. he's not doing anything right so are you yeah. saying like they pulling like a bait and switch with it like they're asking for one thing and doing another so yeah so honestly what it is i also ex explained to men some of the neurological biological um psychological differences with women and the thing about women is that we're we are on a quest for like the absolute peace and so sometimes mm -hmm. what happens is her initial her initial issue after discovery it's kind of like it's kind of it kind of like comes like a rabbit hole and it's pretty common for women so if she notices a challenge challenge gets resolved it becomes apparent that that issue is actually far deeper and the reason why she doesn't know it is because she hasn't been in the proper environment to even discover it so in other words she will not discover this with her parents she will not discover this with her friends she will not discover this in the workplace she's going to discover it in the context of being emotionally vulnerable and in love with the man that she's in and so she's becoming so she has any practice at all yeah, I never really and thought I'm about it like that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, you were breaking up a little bit, uh, but um, I never thought about it. You said something that was really interesting, like she'll never get to experience that before. Um, on, on the podcast, we talk about it all the time, how uh, since men are, have to be the aggressors in the dating market um, and they have to shoot their shot and deal with rejection and all that from an early age, men are just better equipped at, at dating than women because they they have to do a lot more work um and it sounds like um what you just said really kind of illustrated it where the the situations that men really encounter with women we've been encountering them same kind of situations since our teenage years they just start to cost more as you become older and make more money or whatnot uh so i thought that was really interesting to see um yes and i think I, I that wanna... one, one other thing i want to add to that is i wanted to add one more thing to that is when a man encounters that he should consider that an honor versus considering it really? an issue because there's trust so when a woman stops talking when a woman stops sharing now you're in trouble if she's complaining <laughs> then she sees you as a source and as a, as the possibility of, of, of resolve. She sees you as a problem solver. But when she stops introducing problems to you, it's not that she's become less of a nag, it's that her trust, her trust levels for you have dropped significantly. And so, um, you know, hmm. women are more That's sensitive. That's interesting. Are more sensitive. It is. Yeah. Women are more sensitive. We're more sensitive. And so we're, um, you know, we, we, we have a hard time handling stress because we have lower testosterone than you do. Your testosterone provides you with confidence. It provides you with strength and your testosterone is even keel. Ours rises and drops, you know, throughout the month. So you, you're dealing with four versions of a woman in one month because she has four different phases. And so some months, some weeks she's going to feel very headstrong and very certain and then other weeks where her testosterone drops and estrogen is more prevalent she's going to feel a little bit more doubtful and that's when women tend to ask a lot of those questions because she's coming out of ovulation and into her luteal phase where she becomes more vulnerable and okay. the only thing that will really override that is if she begins to be more afraid of confessing and expressing her angst what, what, what's upsetting her, what's frustrating for her, what's what's cringeworthy for her. If she stops sharing that, now you're in trouble. But if she does share it, that's actually honorable. And so I would love for men to um, to be able to normalize that to a, to a degree. But the exception for this is to make this balanced for men so that men are not feeling like, well, damn, I got to deal with all that, is, is if she's respectful. So if she's disrespectful, that's a character flaw, right? Now we're not talking about hormones. We're talking about character. Okay. Very yeah. good distinction. Uh, 
Is. Yeah, because I, I always feel like a, a woman that, well, anybody, for a man or a woman, uh, somebody that really respects you, it's always going to be prevalent. You know what I'm saying? Even when they mad at you, even when they frustrated or angry or whatnot, they're just not going to handle you or talk to you any kind of way. Uh, and so that is definitely a red flag. And, uh, if it's if it's something that you you never address, it's gonna it's gonna be very difficult to fix that problem or to to you know cage the animal later on down the line, especially if you are already married or already <laughs> have kids with her. Totally. Yep. Okay, so I wanted to ask you uh, in today's dating climate, it seems like uh, well, a lot of women are delusional about their expectations of men. Uh, and from a male perspective, it feels like women only want a rich man. Uh, what advice do you give to your clients to deal with, with, with today's dating climate? Yeah, today's dating climate is very um, staunch and uncomfortable. <laughs> and I think that um, what's going to support all of us, anybody who's single, who's dating, is you got to change your circle up a bit. So... Most women who have time to talk about what they want out of a man on social media, more than likely, she doesn't have a social life because she's on social media all day. So go outside. Go outside to women who deal with real men and who know what real life looks like, as opposed to women who are neurologically being hypnotized by what social media is presenting them and people who are holding master classes to talk to women about what they should and sh what they should be expecting from men financially because they cannot trust men emotionally. And I think some of this has come from, you know, it's coming from a space of fear. So mm -hmm. the best advice that I could say is to go outside, go outside to places and spaces that land for who you are as a man and what you're looking to create. So if you're in real estate, go to real estate events. If you are in tech, go to Afrotech. If you are an entrepreneur, go to conferences and places where there are social gatherings to step away from the online um, fake Hollywood that is Instagram. <laughs> uh, you, yeah. you, raised, you raised some great points there. But the thing with social media, it's it's designed to be addictive. So if you let's just say you search on Instagram, how to get money out of a man, a bunch of stuff's gonna come and oh, yeah. mass classes, just like you said there, right? But here's a lot of toxic. Thing. It is. So why, why do you think like women don't pay attention to the men on how they make their decisions when it comes to marrying somebody or even committing to somebody? Can you ask that question one more time? Yep, why don't you think women pay attention when, when it comes to a man on his decision making when it comes to somebody he would marry or date? I think because they have fake standards that are masked as they're they're masked as standards, but they're actually fake expectations. So it's fake standards. Mm -hmm. They're moving off of expectations because they don't want to look a fool. You know, women women will say that a lot. You don't cheat on me, don't make me look stupid. <laughs> right. Right. Looking looking a fool for a woman is a real thing. And so the last thing a woman wants to feel like, and women are also competitive, which is that how does she get all those things? Why can't I get those things? And what do I need to do to have that kind of lifestyle? Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting that, with wanting a lavish lifestyle, right? Like the desire, there's no, that's of no criminal offense. Um, but women are, um, are just having fake, they have just fake standards. They're not real. They're not, so you'll hear, you'll hear women say things like, I ain't gonna sleep with no man if he can't even help me fix my tires if I'm if I'm down and out. That's not a standard. That's an expectation. Right. Yeah, there there are a lot of un spoken and un un unspoken expectations that get placed on men. Uh and that's why a lot of times guys have they they try to come give women disclaimers. You know, let's see where things go. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's see how let's let's See, you know, they, they try to help them manage their expectations mm -hmm. because that's usually what causes a disruption in the natural process of a man falling for a woman. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because when he when he goes through that phase where he shot his shot from the first couple conversations, y'all laughing, you know, oh man, it's two o'clock in the morning already. You know what I'm saying? Like where y'all feel like y'all know each other, uh, uh, you know, for a long time. Y'all, those are the things that make a man think about you during yep. his day right. and look forward to seeing you. But then once the woman starts placing those expectations where she's treating him like he's her man, but 
y'all only in week number three you yeah. know what i'm saying like things like <laughs> that where exactly. now you you she's giving off all these red flags and now she can got herself cut off now she's the victim now right. you know what i'm saying like so yeah. it's the, the, the but, normal cycle but you know what's crazy about the fake expectations that you said like you women that have all these expectations or fake expectations but not one of them will talk about any way that they would reciprocate to that man you know in that Correct. relationship oh, yeah, it's crazy yeah we're not taught as women we're, what we're taught as women is what to expect from a man to be able to identify if he's a good man or not because we are the vulnerable uh, species of the two, right? We're the most vulnerable right. because we can get pregnant, so on, so on and so forth. But what we are not taught is how to treat a man. And really and truly, as opposed to women learning how to treat a man, a woman should learn how to treat herself. Because honestly, men are not monolithic. There are all sorts of men, all different types of archetypes. And at the end of the day, if a woman embodies self-love, self-respect, self-integrity, then at least she can recognize it in someone else. And instead of trying to mold him into that, right? So if you meet a man and he's pro 50-50, what women are trying to do is make him and bend him into being a 100% provider, as opposed to doing the work to attract a man who will do 100% of the provision, provided that she is a match for what a, what a man who's going to provide 100% wants out of a woman, right? So she tries to have... She tries to have it on both on both ends, and it does it doesn't work like that. Yeah, I mean that's a very practical approach that you that you bring there to that. Yeah, I, I mean I think when it comes to the the hundred percent, I think a lot of women expect that when it's not the they have to look into the facts of today's economy. You know the mm -hmm. how hard how much money. Uh, in comparison to income, it costs to to put down on a house, to put down on a car, interest rates. Like those are the things, those things are real, you know? Um, and so um, I don't, th this ain't the, the 80s or 90s where a dude making 70K can be balling out and living like <laughs> he's living lavish, you know and what I mean? not like, ball out 70K, no. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, on paper, it sounds good, you know what I'm saying? Like, but in, in reality, it's not that, that much money. Uh, and so a lot of these women uh, curb guys that have decent salaries and, and can provide decent lifestyles because they feel like this rich dude's going to come, like they're going to miss out on the rich dude that want them. Like, sis, all y'all not going to get with a rich NFL dude. Um, yeah. And I just think a lot of them need to have more realistic expectations um, and identify what's a quality man. And that's what I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you, what are some of the characteristics that women should be looking for in men? The number one, there is really one. And the number one is empathy. Once a man practices, establishes, and can walk in empathy, which is to be clear, empathy is not just being able to, you know, put himself in your shoes. Put himself in your shoes and see it from your worldview and vice versa. She cannot expect that from a man and not provide that. She too would have to see things from a man's point of view in his world. Once a person has that, everything else falls into place. But you can have everything else and have not empathy and you're in danger. So there is really just one quality that makes a person a good person. And that's that empathy. Um, Just to just follow up from that. Do you think, with, you know, especially in today's day, day and age of social media, do you think we live in like the most selfish generation yes. in this day and age? Well, I won't yeah, say the man. most. Selfish. I won't. I won't say that we're the most selfish because I think that mankind has always been selfish, self inclining Whether okay. we got married to prevent wars, or whether mm -hmm. we, you know, sold our kids off to, you know, for peace and things of the, for the greater good and whatever we wanted to say, there were all, there were more than likely reason, rhymes and reasons for why we do what we do. Our selfishness is amplified because social media has a spotlight on it. So we get to see things a lot more clearer. But, you know, I am a woman of, of faith. I'm a woman of God. And, you know, the word of God says that there is nothing new under the sun. So everything that we are seeing is just a byproduct of, of mankind, period. Um, it's just amplified. Yeah. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you, um, man, I... Or have my question uh, right there. Oh, oh no, that's one of the things. Um, and I this question was uh, up on SD's uh, page earlier this week uh, about casual dating uh, and things that men shouldn't do 
uh, if they they're not looking for a serious relationship. Uh, what are your do you have any do's and don'ts for guys that are just looking to be single and not looking for something serious? You know, the craziest thing is some people who are not looking for anything serious tend to provide the most emotional upfront intimacy, int- emotional intimacy upfront. And sometimes, so I've spoken to men who are married um, and date casually and they have arrangements and they tell women, you know, look, I'm never leaving my wife, like never. So don't get caught up. And what it is, is that he, he enjoys the something new, right? Like that Mm -hmm. is a very, that is a thing. And the something new that he enjoys is providing experiences, right? So expanding her world, giving her a, a, a new taste, you know, so he's taking her to the fancy restaurants and things of that nature. He makes great money. He's in, he's a, a husband inspired. So a husband inspired is a, a man who is exceptionally finds his, his purpose in life or finds whatever he's good at. And it explodes because he has a wife, he has his kids, and those things motivate him to another degree. So he has even more. And so women fall in love with this man because he's emo- he is Papa. seemingly emotionally available. Yeah. He's expanding her world. He's taking her to fancy restaurants, and she unfortunately gets hooked. And so <laughs> the reality is for guys who want to date casually, they casually are cool with ex- exchanging emotional intimacy because it's really not at stake. Mm-hmm. Whereas a man who's serious about dating and falling in love, and he knows the capacity in which he can like love deeply, he is not playing. So he might he might withhold a bit, but the guy who's casually dating, he can give off off the facade that appeal. He can like really suck her in. So do's and well, don'ts. I can't I can't even give the do's and don'ts for a guy like that because he's doing what he's intending to do to have the success that he's intending to have. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, it, uh, as a, from a guy's perspective, a lot of times, w- like you said, a dude they got a wife or he's just dealing with women on the side. Um, in a lot of ways, that allows a man a lot of freedom to create mm-hmm. that intimacy that you talked about, because he don't care if you stop <laughs> rocking with him. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not, <laughs> exactly. You know, like so a lot There's of no the skin times. In the game. A lot of the times the lies and deceit that women experience are from men trying to prevent them from leaving or prevent them from cutting them off. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. kind of absent when a man's in that, you ain't my old lady, I got somebody at home type of vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the things that uh, are on the post that they were talking about uh, were all things that women accept from men. Like they were saying things like, you shouldn't be kissing. You shouldn't be having raw sex. You shouldn't be doing that type of thing. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How is it on, on a man to not do all these things when women are the ones that control whether it happens or not? Exactly. And so I, I it, it just feel like it's more of the, the man needs to do more. If a woman does fall in love and catch feelings and, and ends up in a situation, it's the man's fault. And, and I think that's unfair. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, Bob Marley did say that the biggest coward is a man who who ignites women's emotions, you know, um, paraphrasing, and has no intention of, like, cultivating and nurture, nurturing it. But that's provided that you're expressing that quote to a man who gives a damn about that. A man right. who does not give a damn about that he is successful because he's accomplishing what he set out to do, which is to create emotional, um, superficial emotional intimacy. I can't share do's and don'ts to a man like that because the nobility around what he's doing is absent. So no nobility stands on stands on yet what's what's right, what's what's true, what's good, and what's bad. And if that uh, if that are you so are you saying hold on? Let I, I me mean, make sure I understand correctly. So are you saying that a guy that's just just prefers to be single or doesn't want to doesn't have the focus on the commitment, he's not noble by actively dating women? Well, hmm. again, he's he's his intention is to create emotional intimacy that's superficial. And at some point, right, when we think about nobility, nobility is like another tier, another level in which you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking right. about somebody else, right? So you're thinking about all parties involved. You're thinking about the greater good. If a man is showing up knowing cognitively he's aware 
that by me doing these things, she could catch feelings. He is out of the realm of nobility because that's he doesn't fair. care. Because that no, that's <laughs> not right. Because <laughs> that means that means like so. Because because a woman can a, a guy that's single that that is taking a woman nice places, treating a woman with respect, doing nice things for a woman is not noble because he just doesn't want to be in a relationship. That's that so, sounds so again, right? It's when you're when you have a conscious. It's, it's no different than a woman saying, "I'm gonna go on dates with a guy. If he wants to spend his money on me, that's cool. I'll let him know it's up, but I have no intention of being his girl because I want free meals. It's self inclined. It's self enriched. It doesn't really. She's not caring about him. There's and you can do that, but you also right. cannot. You cannot impose values that are under the under the like under the realm of nobility for somebody like that because they are successful she is successfully dating without commitment and receiving and a man too is successful in creating false intimacy or superficial intimacy what and and i'm not i'm not saying that he shouldn't do it i'm saying that it doesn't make sense to tell a man or any person who's not looking to co-create what they should and shouldn't do because should and shouldn't do would involve caring about what somebody else is going to be experiencing. That's not their goal. Right. So but it's, it's thing, a moot point. I, I, and I, agree, I, I don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying at all whatsoever. But in both situations that you just explained, both have the option of declining those situations. 100%. So, but that's not, yeah. but that wouldn't, that would not be successful. Their intention, so you ever heard of like people saying like whether or not somebody unalives themselves and whether it's successful or not. And if right. they actually yeah. unalive themselves, it is a success because that was the intention. So gotcha. if a man is intending yeah. to create a false, like a superficial, I don't want to say false, but a superficial level of intimacy with multiple women. And he's cognitively aware that women do catch feelings, that anything can, all these things, but it's, that's not enough for him to not do it. He is purely okay. thinking about what makes him feel good as a man. So her feelings and emotions are a moot point. There's no point in That's talking okay. about what he should and shouldn't do. He's yeah, I, I can agree with that. You, you're right. That. You're right. Uh, just, just leave it. Just leave it. These, <laughs> these are the problems that we have where we try to change somebody. That's who he, how he wants to show up, and that's who he wants to be. I'm not telling a man what to do and not to do when you're already successful doing what you set out to do. You leave that kind of man alone if you are not the kind of woman that wants that. Yeah. I would not date right. a man Agreed. and I'm not changing I'm not changing him. I'm not trying to That's... prove to be the difference. <laughs> you, and, <laughs> as you should smart approach. Yeah. All right with that. That's re- very smart. That. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh man, time to flew by. It looks like we are up to the clock. Uh, before we get up out of here, can you let everybody know how they can find you and your content? Absolutely. Well, first I want to say thank you guys so much. You guys know I'm already a fan and we are definitely IG family. So thank you for having me again. Absolutely. And to the viewers, I'm Ask Miss Cassandra on Instagram. That's A-S-K-M-S-C-A-S-S-A-N-D-R-A. And I'm a life and relationship coach and a men's advocate. Uh, all right. But, uh, before we go, I want to give another shout out to my man, Brother Soul Productions. Uh, for keeping us laced with our background music. Uh, and I want to remind everybody to continue supporting the podcast or our cash app and our PayPal. Uh, yes. we, we miss you, SD, man. We'll get you back on our next episode. Uh, Jay, I appreciate you linking up with me so we can get this one knocked out. Uh, and Cassandra, as always, we really enjoy the combo. Uh, this same. has been another episode of the Hold a Husband Podcast, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Peace.